Tina Mitchell here with your money chat. I'm seeing many in the media comparing today's housing market to the housing bubble, specifically looking at multiple incomes to home prices and saying that the bubble has to be approaching because it's higher than it was during the last bubble. There are so many differences, including interest rates and the levels at the income that allow from the additional disposable income. But the biggest one that they are not considering is the levels of inventory. During the financial meltdown, the Great Recession of 2008, there were 3.81 million homes for sale. And today there are only 1 million homes for sale. There's a difference between 20% appreciation going back to towards 5% and going to a 20% decline or depreciation. That's not what we are seeing at all. There are also 14 million more households today and renting is much cheaper back then than where it is now, which is much more expensive. I think that appreciation will come down to a high single digits, which is a healthy and sustainable level, but that will not, that we're not going to be seeing depreciation. News on the Fed, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari spoke on CNBC. He was the most dominant Fed member that was screaming against the Fed hikes and was opposed to them through at least 2023. He was a firm believer that the inflation would be trend story and has now changed his tune and said that the inflation is the biggest problem. He seemed out of touch with reality in saying that mortgage rates are higher because of the Fed's credibility and that would hike rates. He doesn't understand it or make the connection that rates are higher because of inflation which the Fed created. He went on to say that consumer confidence is high because of the wealth effect in housing, but it's not the most liquid unless you take out home equity or credit or, or cash out refinances. People do not um, do make those payments. They're not taking that out in payments because of gas, because of the gas station. He also points to the wealth gap but it was the Fed specifically, uh, Bernanke and Yellen, that created this wealth gap, gap. Quantitative easing caused asset prices to spike, but not everyone participates in the home ownership or the stock market. As I've shared in money chats, many money chats before, there are so many differences as this time is different. One big of the differences, unlike 2020, 2006 and 2007, is loan quality is much different now. The lending is much more responsible. Now, on the unemployment front, front, it takes two reports to understand the job situation. The unemployment rate remained at a very strong 3.6, but did not decline to the 3.5 expected. The unemployment rate is uh, delivered from the housing survey, which has its own job creation component. With the housing service survey, there were 353,000 job losses, while the labor force decreased by 363,000, which is why the unemployment rate remained the same. This means that the unemployment rate remains stable for the wrong reasons. It was not due to strong job growth, but rather more people leaving, leaving the labor force than lost than jobs loss. The labor force participation declined from 62.5 to 62.2 percent, which was beneath expectations, and about 1.2 percent below where it was pre-COVID. Why is the unemployment rate showing strength even though people within the survey lost their jobs? Well, the report removes people who are not actively searching for a job. There are almost six million people that are not being counted that want a job, but have not looked in the last four weeks. It begs the question, how bad do they really want a job if they haven't looked in the last four weeks? Now, the U.S. all-in unemployment rate, which adds back the, these individuals, increased from 6.9% to 7% and is, to, is really more of the true employment unemployment rate. This is the first tick up that we have seen in a long time. So the question is, is it an outlier? or signs that things are slowing and that we may have see, uh, see a low in the unemployment. Time will tell. Tina Mitchell, and that is your money chat. Coming